and welcome to the Auntie Lisa Show. What should we do a story about today? Let's see. <laughs> oh, I picked out two. Nobody panic. Lucy and El Fuego. I'll do from that bag. And this bag. Ah, look at that. It's all of us. Mm. And. Qua quasi. Quasi. Qua that cat, anyway. And a triceratops. Lovely. Every good story should have a dinosaur in it. Let's see. Places. Places, please. Oh, I've dropped one on the floor. Oh, no. <sighs> the sun. I should have taken that one out because that's just crazy talk. And a roller coaster. Marvellous. Okay. Uh, I can't remember. Transport. I should know by now what's in each bag. A speedboat. Mm-hmm. And bag of random things. Is it gonna be something good? A big hole. <laughs> right. Okie dokie. Let's see now. <clears throat> One day. Aunt Elisa, Alexander, and Christopher um, were invited to visit um, the Octonauts for a nice cup of tea and a sit down. Aunt Elisa said, Yes! I love a nice cup of tea and a sit down. It's literally one of my favourite things to do. Hence, sitting, drinking tea now. Mm -mm -mm. So, they packed a bag with some biscuits in it because it's always good to arrive with biscuits. People appreciate it. And they set off to the seaside. I'm very tired. And you know what? No one at school would let me have a nap today. Not one of the children said yes when I said I should have a nap. They said, no. I was really mean, I felt. Apparently, when you're the teacher, you're not allowed to have a nap. Anyway, I digress. So, Aunt Elisa, Christopher and Alexander had been invited for a nice cup of tea with Quasi and all the other octonauts on the octopod. And so they set off to the beach and got on a nice boat that they happened to have there. It was the kind of boat that you row. So they were rowing their lovely boat. And everything was going absolutely hunky-dunky. And they arrived at the octopod that was in the middle of the sea and it was a beautiful sunny day and quasi popped out of the top and he said ahoy there my hearties welcome aboard the octopod for a nice cup of tea and a sit down and aunt elise said yes this is my favorite thing so they all climbed aboard the octopod and climbed inside and they did indeed have a nice cup of tea and a sit down. That is until disaster struck. Dun, dun, dun. They were just finishing up their second cup of tea and starting work on their second packet of biscuits when all of a sudden the octopod started swirling around. And everyone went, whoa, I feel a bit sick, whoa, and the octopod was swirling and swirling and swirling, and everyone went, what's going on? 
and all the alarms were going off. <coughs> Everything was going crazy all around them. And they said, I just don't understand. What? Everyone started feeling sick. Well, they looked outside and all around them, all the fish were also going... <coughs> and Auntie Lee said, you know what, guys? It looks like... It looks like we're going down the drain. Could could somebody possibly have pulled the plug on the sea? Oh, good Lord, no. This was supposed to be a quiet day. Oh, my tea is all over the place. Ah! Well, this carried on for quite some time. Everyone was on high alert, just holding on to anything they could because the octopod was like... And then it went, it went down a really, really, really big hole in the ground. The sea had drained out through a plug hole in the bottom of the ocean bed. There was a blinking disaster, I tell you, a disaster. Everyone was now getting sucked down a hole. Help! Everyone screamed. Help! Help! The octopod was just like down the hole, flushed away almost like a big octopod shaped poo down the drain. And then suddenly they stopped falling. Whoa, where are we? And they looked around and their little whizzy heads were spinning a little bit still from the spinning around they'd just been doing. And everyone looked around and went, everyone okay? Quasi was okay. Dashi was being sick in the corner, but she seemed okay. Um, Captain Barnacles was clinging to the ceiling by all of his many legs. Everyone was just going a bit crazy. Well, they looked around, they said, okay, it seems we've stopped draining. We must have landed somewhere, but where are we? Where indeed had the sea drained out into? Was it like a giant sea sewer? Like what happens when you flush the toilet? They certainly hoped not because no one wants to live in a giant sea sewer. That would be horrible. A sewer, by the way, in case you don't know, is where all the poo goes. It's gross. Anyway, so they looked around and it was quite dark down there. Maybe we're in like a deeper bit of the sea. Well, they looked and they looked and they looked. And they started to see some of the sea animals kind of emerging, like ooh, swimming around in circles still. Ooh, everyone was dizzy. And then they spotted an upturned speedboat. And they were like, what? There's an upturned speedboat over there. Maybe there's someone who needs our help. So... Octopods to now, octonauts to the rescue, said Captain Barnacles. He had regained his sense of which way up was the right way up and landed on the floor. And he was taking charge. Wait, Captain Barnacles is not the octopus. Octopus. That's the other guy. Damn it. Captain Barnacles, as we all know, is a polar bear. Captain Barnacles, anyway, was taking charge. And he steered the octopod all the way over to the upturned speedboat that they'd just all spotted. And who do you suppose was clinging to the side of the upturned speedboat? Well, I'll tell you. It was Lucy. 
Yes, Lucy was clinging. And on the other side was Gru. They were both clinging to the side of the speedboat. Oh, they did not look in a good way at all. So the octopod surfaced and out popped, of course, Alexander and Christopher. Because we almost forgot they were there. Auntie Lise was so excited about going down a plug hole. And Alexander and Christopher said, hey, hey, quick, Lucy, Gru, come over here. We can rescue you. And they threw them a line with a ring on the end of it. <clears throat> and they pulled in Lucy and Gru and welcomed them aboard the octopod. Lucy and Gru were beside themselves with relief. They said, you guys, we didn't know what was going on. We just got sucked down this hole. And Alexander and Christopher said, yeah, us too. We all just got sucked down the hole. It is crazy. It's like we've been sucked down the drain. Oh, do you have any idea what's going on? And Gru said, I don't know what's going on. It's all crazy to me. And they said, oh, Gru, funny you knew. That would be some help. Well, he didn't know. So they carried on exploring now with their octopod because it seemed to be the safest thing to do. And they were exploring and exploring. And they found another boat. A shipwreck almost by this time. And they looked at the boat and it looked a lot like, actually, maybe not a boat, but more of a jet ski. In fact, now that I come to think of it, it wasn't a boat, it was a jet ski. And do you know who they found clinging to the jet ski? <sighs> it was El Fuego. And he said... Hey, I know I'm a ghost, but this is super scary. What's going on? And everyone went, we don't know. El Fuego, come and join us on the octopod. El Fuego joined. He said, oh, no, you've got to rescue Jack. Jack is lost. He's out there somewhere. Lost. We've got to rescue Jack. He's not a ghost like me. He could drown. And everyone went, oh, no, we've got to rescue Jack. <sighs> what was Jack doing? And El Fuego said, Jack was riding on his, you know, thing like I've been on, a jet ski. He was on a jet ski. We've got to find him, you guys. We've got to find him. So, Alexander and Christopher said, okay, how can we track down Jack? What's the best way? And then they remembered the best way to get hold of Jack, pff, call him. So, they called him up on their iPad. And they said, and it went beep, 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 beep. And through some miracle, it connected. And they were like, Jack, Jack, where are you? And Jack said, oh, my God. I thought I was lost forever. Ah! And he was all soggy. His cap had flown away. And he was very, very relieved to see somebody. But he said, I don't know where I am. I was in the sea on my jet ski. And then it was a swirly, swirly thing. And then I got sucked down a hole. And Alexander and Christopher said, that happened to us too. We've all been sucked down a drain of the sea. We just don't know what's going on. We'll come and rescue you. Where do you think you are? And he said, I don't know where I am, but it's very dark. <sighs> And I think I can hear monsters. Alexander and Christopher said, Monsters? What do you mean you can hear monsters? And he said, Well, I can hear a funny noise. But it's so dark I can't see what it is. And Alexander said, What kind of funny noise? And Jack said, It sounds like, wait, you can hear it in a second. It's coming back. Alexander and Christopher went, what is that? That sounds, well, it sounds a bit like Papa when he's sleeping, but assuming it's not him, it sounds like a terrifying monster to us. Okay, stay where you are. We're going to see if we can track you using some of the Octopods kit. Um, oh, I know, we'll use Find My Phone. <laughs> okay, Jack, we're going to come and find you. Beep, 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 beep. 
Oh, smart cookies. What smart cookies? They remembered if you lose someone, you can track them down using Find My Phone. So they did that on their iPad. And beep, 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 beep. Oh, there was Jack. Bing, 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 bing. On the map. But the map did not look like the normal map at all. The map was all like, eh, eh, eh. The picture was all crazy and fuzzy. It was almost as if Google didn't know what the map should look like. Hmm, interesting. Nonetheless, it gave them coordinates to where Jack was, was now clinging for his life. And they said, Jack, we are on our way. You just stay right there. And they went to find Jack. Well, well. Captain Barnacles said, right then, my hearties. We have got to go and find Jack. And Quasi said, ahoy there. It be the pirate way to rescue one's friends. Let's be going to rescue Jack. Jack, Jack, we've got to rescue him. He's the best. So, the octopod does not move fast, let's be honest. But it moved fast enough. And it went through the sea. Captain Barnacles was steering. Alexander and Christopher were going left a bit, right a bit, left. Yep, keep going, keep going. They could see where they were going on the, on the map on the thing. And eventually, eventually, they were where they thought Jack was, should be. <coughs> and they looked around and they looked around. And they're like, Jack, 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 where are you, Jack? And then they heard a terrifying noise. It went. And they said, Jack, Jack! They couldn't see Jack anywhere. The terrifying noise was getting louder and louder. And they went, oh, where on earth is Jack? Well, they found Jack's um, jet ski. And attached to Jack's jet ski. Jack's jet ski. Jack's jet ski. Jack's jet ski. <laughs> in the one of the pouches was his iPad. And they were like, we've got Jack's iPad, but where is Jack? <gasps> they looked around and they saw something in the darkness. Swish, 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 swishing up all the, all the water around them. And they went, oh no, Jack, maybe he's been got by a terrifying creature. Oh no. And so they moved the octopod closer and closer and closer. And what is it? What is it? <gasps> what is it? Do you know what it was? It was a triceratops having a nap on top of a broken tree. And they were like, do you think that's what was making the horrible noise? And then it went. <laughs> and everyone went. That was what was making the horrible noise. Oh, thank goodness. But seriously, where is Jack? Well, as luck would have it, Jack was on top of the Triceratops. He was sat up there like... <laughs> because he had accidentally let go of his jet ski and he had floated off towards the terrifying sound. And that was the only thing he could cling on to was the Triceratops. And he was clinging on as tight as he could. Which is easy because Triceratops have good horns for clinging on hold of. And he was like, ah, you guys don't wake him up, don't wake him up, shh, don't wake him up. And they were like, well, mm, I don't know how we're going to get you off of there. And Joe was like, oh, let me off of me, I don't like being on top of a Triceratops, what if he wakes up? Well... As he said that, the Triceratops went <laughs> and he woke up and he went <laughs> and he realised he had something on his back and he was like <laughs> and then he fell into the sea, which was the sea, I mean, we, I guess. Anyway, and Jack was like, ow, 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 and the Triceratops swam away with Jack still on his back. And everyone went, no, now we've got to chase the Triceratops and Jack. Oh, it's just going from more tricky to trickier and trickier. Well, so they chased Jack that was on Triceratops' back. 
which rhymes. So that's <laughs> a great poem. Anyway, so Jack was on top of the Triceratops. The Triceratops are surprisingly good swimmers. Swimming away. <laughs> Still quite grumpy about having something stuck to his back. But, as it turns out, Triceratops are not entirely stupid creatures. This Triceratops could smell land. Probably. In any case, he found his way to a nearby beach. And everyone went, what? He's found the beach. We found land. Hooray, maybe we can all get back to wherever we managed to come from, from our home, from the sea, from the original sea, not this other sea where we've just been ejected. Anyway, so everyone got onto the land and then they sat on the beach and looked out to sea as such as it was. And they saw something happening in the distance. And they went, what is that happening in the distance? It was a little glimmer of light. The Triceratops, by the way, had wandered off and started eating something in the hedgerows nearby. And everyone, the Christopher Alexander and Auntie Lisa, El Fuego, the Octonauts, Gru, Lucy, and that's it all started looking out to sea and they saw this light and the light got bigger and bigger and bigger and then somebody said you know what i think that's the sun and they went that can't be the sun we're in we're under the ground aren't we under the ground i'm very confused right now well it got bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter and it up and up and up it went. And everyone went, you know what? That really does look like the sun. Hmm. But how? And then they looked around and they realised that they weren't on any ordinary beach. They were on a beach in Australia. To other people, Australia. They were in Australia. And they were like, What? What just happened here? Did did we go down the plug hole in the world and it drained out on the other side of the planet? And now the sun's coming up here and we're in Australia. And everyone said, You know what? I think that probably is must have been what happened. But how? And their brains started to scramble because how on earth did you get sucked down the plug hole and spit out on the other side of the world? Like, there's not a tunnel through the earth, is there? Or is there? I don't know. Maybe there is. So anyway, they all sat on the beach and watched the sun rise. Quite relieved, at least, to still be on earth. I mean, that's good news. <clears throat> and they, Well, they said, we are... At least we're alive. And now, I guess, we're all on holiday. We're in Australia, mate. This is awesome. And they said, do you know what I think we should do, said Auntie Lisa. I think we should go check out Australia, you guys. And everyone went, yeah, let's check out Australia. I mean, we didn't have to pay for the airfare. That's good news. So... All of the Octonauts, Lucy, Gru, El Fuego, Christopher, Alexander and Auntie Lisa, but not the Triceratops because he was busy eating, all went on a little tour of Australia. And they saw all the cool animals together like kangaroos, kangaroos and crocodiles and um, some other things, koalas, yep, kookaburras. And that's all I can think of. They saw all the cool animals. And then, to finish their holiday off in style, they all had a go on the world's, or the Australia's biggest roller coaster. And Auntie Lisa tried her best not to be terrified, but it turned out she's always terrified of roller coasters. And so she was like, ah! And everyone else, no, she was like, ah! And everyone else was like, yeah! They had a blast, an absolute blast. And then, because um, because 
they'd had such a great time, they decided to all have another cup of tea and some cake and some biscuits and a sit down, but not on the octopod or on anything on the sea. They just went to a nice cafe and had a lovely time. And that is the end of the story. Love you guys. Night night.